Hello, North Central Washington, and welcome to Networked, where we connect you with people and resources across the region. I'm your host, Jenny Rojanasatian, and on today's episode, I'm thrilled to introduce you to the Rocky Reach Discovery Center. Through its expansive views, stories, games, history, and art, the Rocky Reach Discovery Center offers an all new way to experience the Columbia River. Joining me on air today will be Chelan County PUD Services Manager, Kristen Lodge, and Outreach and Education Specialist, Bob Bauer, to talk about what you can expect when you visit the Rocky Reach Discovery Center and the incredible remodel they just finished. Don't go too far, we'll be back on air right after this brief commercial break. And welcome to Networked. I am delighted to have two guests on air with me for today's episode, uh, Kristen Lodge and Bob Bauer with Chelan County PUD. Welcome to the TV show. Thanks for having us. Very excited to have you on air today. Um, I think Bob, we've had on a couple years ago, um, but before we dive into Chelan PUD and the Rocky Reach Discovery Center, such an incredible asset we have here, I'd love for our audience to get to know the two of you a little bit better. So Kristen, maybe I'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and your career background here in the Wenatchee Valley. Great, well, I'm a hometown local. So okay. born and raised here in Wenatchee. Um, I went to the University of Washington and I ended up working there for about 10 years. I worked in their central marketing department mm -hmm doing for the main part, large um, public events and educational opportunities. Mm -hmm. So it was a great way to talk about the UW and the great things that were going on there. Um, then my family and I moved back to Wenatchee and we're so glad to be back here. We've got two little ones that we're raising here in the Valley with two sets of grandparents. Yeah. So <laughs> couldn't be more thrilled with that. And I worked for the Wenatchee Valley Museum. I was uh, the director of development and communications. But when this job came up yeah. at the Rocky Reach Discovery Center, I just was thrilled to be a part of the great work going on there at the Discovery Center and this brand new asset that we get to share with the community and all the wonderful public power benefits that we're able to offer at the PUD. So glad to join the team, Bob and the team there at the Discovery Center. And um, your role now at Rocky Reach Discovery Center and the visitor services manager. Visitor, visitor services. Thank you so much. And Bob, you've been a part of the Rocky Reach Discovery Center for a few years. For a few, about for 19. A few, yeah. 19, <laughs> for, give or take. For yeah. a few years. So many members of our community may have already interacted with you with all of the different programs you offer, but uh, tell us a little bit about your background as well. Sure. So uh, my professional degree is in theology. Mm -hmm. So I also pastor a church and have done evangelism and uh, historically, I've been kind of like uh, all over the place with a little bit of everything. Spent time in the military and the Air Force, uh, was a highway patrol officer for a season, was a probation officer for another season. And then uh, the stars lined up uh, about 19 years ago. I saw an opportunity at Chelan County PUD at the Discovery Center. And uh, if I can't do anything else, I can run my mouth. And they needed somebody <laughs> to be able to run their mouth and tell the story. Yeah. And I fell in love with the story that we tell. And I've been telling the story and, and sharing the, the wonders of hydropower for the last 19 years as the Chelan County uh, PUD Outreach Education Specialist. And Bob, you have done some incredible work um, and continue to do some incredible incredible work. I know the Tech Alliance honored you and Debbie um, a few years ago with a STEM Educator Award for the really innovative curriculum programs and resources you pro provide to K-12 education across the region. But we're going to dive more into resources and educational opportunities next segment. Maybe let's, for those who have not been there, what is the Rocky Reach Discovery Center? Um, the, the, tell us more about this incredible um, asset we have in our community. So as I came on board, the yeah. Discovery Center had just completed a major renovation. Yeah. So it is all brand new and it's moved away from the traditional concepts of museums mm -hmm. and the former Museum of the Columbia where you'd stand and read a panel and then move a few feet and stand and read another panel. And it's a totally innovative, hands-on, interactive experience now for kids and families and people of all ages. And we're just really enjoying sharing it with the community. So three floors of hands-on interactive displays and experiences, learning about hydropower, 
learning about the first people of the Columbia, mm -hmm. learning about public power, and getting that underwater look, uh, at looking a salmon in the eye. Um, oh, I want to talk a little about that because that's really, really exciting yeah. what has been done on the fish ladder. But if people had been in before, let's kind of frame that. So what, the Rocky Reach Discovery Center built in the 1960s mm -hmm. and had been a museum right attached with the dam. Correct. Yes. And then this new evolution is now opened about a year, two years? Uh, August 25th, yeah. okay. uh, 2021. Okay. Yep. So it's not that old. Not we're, that old. We're coming up on our first yeah. year. Yep. So Bob, for those who had, have, had been to Rocky Reach in the past, maybe a couple years ago or even 10, 15 years, tell us how transformative that difference is now from sure. what they would have seen before. Mm -hmm. you, Kristen kind of started on that um, to now. So two years and then before that, you would have visited the Rocky Reach Visitor Center. Okay. And as a visitor center, you would experience things that you experience at a visitor center. You might get some information, pamphlets, you might uh, use the restroom, you might get a cup of coffee, those kind of things, um, with some education in there, but it was more uh, a visitor center okay. um, with the ability to view the salmon through the fish windows. So what we did is we rebranded from a visitor center to a discovery center. Okay. And so the subtitle on the side of the wall as you drive by the discovery center is Experience the Columbia because we have this incredible natural resource, right? The Columbia River that has done so many things for so many generations, whether it was um, uh, food supply for early peoples, uh, water for drinking, uh, irrigation, now transportation. recreation, yes. transportation, the stern wheeler industry before the railroad came in. And then of course, culminating in this wonder that we call hydropower. And so the Columbia River has been serving us you know, for eons, right? Mm -hmm. And so the concept now is to come into the Discovery Center to discover the Columbia and all the benefits that we get from the Columbia. And that includes, you know, not just the benefits we get, but also the responsibilities we have to that great natural resource to protect fish, to protect the environment, to pre protect the banks, those kind of things. So it's a great place to just come and discover this incredible natural resource and and then when the natural resource met the human resource, those dreamers and visionaries who thought, boy, we could build a wall across the river here and change this valley forever. And they did. And it's such an incredible story. And as Kristen mentioned, um, you don't stand and read about it. Mm. You participate in it. And so all of the exhibits are designed to be interactive and challenging and educational. But it's touch, feel, hear, listen, see, all those kind of things. Yeah. Let's... Um mentioned earlier the salmon viewing. Mm -hmm. I got to go into the Discovery Center a couple months ago and um, see the changes you made to to viewing the fish ladder. Mm -hmm. Let, let's talk, it was a big deal. It is, it was a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. It still is. And a lot, a lot of logistics went into that too yeah. to uh, do things like uh, replace windows, right? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that journey just, just to uh, improve fish viewing. Do you want me to go, go ahead? Yeah. Sure. So um, the fish viewing windows have been there for 50 years, right? Yeah. However, they uh, the low part of the window is about chest high for me. Mm -hmm. So for people who are like me or maybe someone in a wheelchair mm -hmm. or maybe a toddler or a first grader, you're kind of doing this to look and see the fish. Yeah. Or lifting a small cat up to... So yeah, so we wanted to bring the windows down so that every toddler everybody no matter what your situation is you can look a salmon in the eye so um it was really a challenge because you have a front end time constraint you can't begin work until you dewater the ladder so the fish migration has to be over but then you have to be finished with it before the next fish migration comes so we had a real short window of opportunity we wanted to make sure that the new windows were on site before we took the old windows out, because if you take the old ones out while they're in transit and one of them gets broke, mm -hmm. because we have to have that fish ladder back up and running when the fish run. So we had those time constraints. Um, we got the windows on board. They're, they're not inexpensive, but they're three inch thick acrylic um, so they can withstand the, the PSI against them. And even though they're three inches thick, you can just look, you don't see any refraction. Um, and they go all the way down to, I would say about most people's knees. And you know, so anybody can just get up and really get that great view 
of, of the fish as they're coming through. It's been fun to watch the community react to this space, especially as the spring Chinook run has started. Oh. It's it's amazing. It's a really cool space. It is, um, if, if you've never gone, this is your call to action to go to the Rocky Reach Discovery Center. But when you walk down and you see the, the yeah, the fish coming through. It is really special. There's nothing quite like seeing nature in action. That I think it's so cool that the Chilean PUD is really invested in providing that educational resource to our community, um, the conservation, preservation, and of course, like the nat protecting those natural resources. And the fish ladder is not the only unique thing. I know you also got a really, um, uh, it was really progressive at the time, the, the uh, fish bypass. Yeah, was it juvenile called, fish right? bypass yeah, system. As well, yeah. to protect our salmon coming through. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a phenomenal success. It was yeah. put in between the fall of 2002 and the spring of 2003. Again, in between fish migrations. Yes. And uh, we're moving juvenile salmon with a much higher survival rate. Um, using less water. So it's been a win, win, win for the fish, for all of our partners, our stakeholders on the river, mm -hmm. and of course for the PUD and, and the ratepayers too. Um, well, we have to head out to a commercial break here, but um, don't go too far. We're gonna come, when we're back, we're gonna talk more about the uh, programs available at the Rocky Reach Discovery Center. Don't go too far. And welcome back to Networked. I've been on air today with Bob Bauer and Kristen Lodge from Chelan PUD. They're both at the Rocky Reach Discovery Center. We just talked about the incredible renovation you did. What was that, $7.7 .7 million? It's no easy feat to renovate a building attached to the river <laughs> and a very active <laughs> dam, right? Like there's no stopping mother nature. So kudos on the completion. We talked a little bit about the, the fish ladder and what an exciting change that piece is, but there is so much more. Um, so Krista, I'd love to start with you. Tell me, let's talk more about the exhibits that are featured at the Discovery Center. Absolutely, I'm excited to share about our exhibits. It's been really fun to watch the community interact with the new experience. And I think some fan favorites are mm -hmm. the Stern Wheeler. So there's an augmented reality experience where you can actually drive a stern wheeler down the Columbia River Rapids, um, help navigate through the sandbars and around the rocks. And I have to admit, it took me, maybe I worked there for months before I could make it before successfully. Of course, my kids made it successfully, like on their second okay. time. So yeah. <laughs> maybe that's age appropriate, but that's a really fun one for our guests to experience. And then there's just really fun interactives. There's an interactive model with the entire dam where you're able to see um, how it's laid out, the cool mm -hmm. um, Z layout of the dam. It's fun to see how the water enters and how we get fish safely past the dam. Um, it's fun for people to um, learn how a water wheel kind of takes that mechanical energy, transfers it into electrical energy and out into the grid. So they're actually able to turn cranks and kind of learn about that evolution of power. And then we've got this gorgeous Thule Lodge and an um, educational exhibits about the first people on the Columbia mm -hmm. too. So. Um, fish and wildlife. Fish what are your favorites? Yeah. What did I miss? Uh, I like internal external anatomy of uh, our big uh, salmon that we have in the oh. fish and wildlife area and then the wildlife presentation um, just because that story has not been told as much as the hydropower story okay. and so it's great and then we did just the Native American the cultural section is is really impressive. Yeah you know something we're not going to go too, too much into this uh, show but the Shine PUD has wildlife biologists and you have teams of scientists who are really committed to conservation and um, our communities and uh, protecting um, obviously our wildlife. And then, like you said, and also how do we honor our first people and tell the stories? And, you know, we have just an incredible rich history in this region. Tell me a little bit about um, the hours, operations. Is there a cost to go to the Discovery Center? We're open from 9.30 to 5, okay. Tuesday through Sunday. We've added Sunday open hours back by popular demand, and that's <laughs> been that's been really well received yeah. by the community. Um, it is free to visit. Mm -hmm. So come on out, see us at the Discovery Center, experience the Columbia for yourself. Wow, that's that's uh, another public power benefit, that's this right. free it, resource. Right. So anyone can uh, just uh, come on down, explore the exhibits, but you're doing more than just being open to the community. You're also engaging in a lot of really tangible programming. 
Um, tell us a little bit about the programs and events that are happening at the Discovery Center. Bob and I and the tour guides and the staff at the Visitors Center have just been incredibly busy this <laughs> spring and moving into summer. It's yeah. been so much fun. Um, the students and the demand from the educational community has mm -hmm. been huge. We are so thrilled to have been able to welcome the schools back to visit. Mm -hmm. We just completed River of Power with our fourth graders. Over 4,000 fourth graders came out to wow. visit us from the NCESD yes. partnership and that was so much fun. And um, our local schools, but outside of local, we've, we've had people travel over an hour and a half to come visit us at the Discovery Center and have that field trip experience and bus tours and trips all the time. What did I miss? Yeah. You didn't miss anything. Yeah, um, yeah we had uh, a lot of fourth graders out there. And then after River of Power, normally things would slow down. But this year, I think students and I think teachers have been kind of locked up for the last couple of years. And yeah. so everybody's just wanting to get out. So the week after River of Power, where it normally slows down, I think we had about a thousand students out there the week wow. after. Just different field trips, different yeah. education experiences that they were interested in. So it's been it's been going full throttle. In addition to the programming at K-12 levels with River of Power, you guys also um, are really innovative in the STEM Academy, the FWE Hydropower and STEM Career Academy, which is really about preparing um, a new generation to go into these incredible careers. Bob, tell me a little bit about um, that academy and why it's so important. Sure. So the acronym FWE is yeah. the Foundation for Water and Energy Education. And we partner with them uh, to host this um, Hydro STEM Career Academy. And so for a week, students come out from about eight in the morning till about 4.30 in the afternoon. And they spend time with all of our crafts folks. They'll put on spikes and climb a power pole. They'll put on a dive helmet and learn the claustrophobic feeling of being a diver. Um, they'll do water quality testing for us up at Arshaland Falls Fish Restoration Habitat. Uh, we're gonna do a cybersecurity module at Wenatchee Valley College with these kids this year. So they're gonna be out next week. Uh, mm -hmm. It's right here, yeah. right now, right? So they spend a week with us. They get introduced to a multitude of STEM related careers. And then they're also introduced to the pathways to those careers. Mm -hmm. So knowing a career is one thing, knowing how to land that career is another. So we, we do both of those things. What's really cool about this particular academy is students come out, they can be going into the ninth grade. So you can have a student coming out of the eighth grade, going into the ninth, participate in the academy. And on Friday, they are automatically enrolled in Wenatchee Valley College and they get college credit for it. So it's fully accredited at the college level. So it's really an exciting event. Um, we're gonna have, I think 26 students out there is what we have registered right yeah. now. Um, we. We have to put a cap on it because quality is really important. And so you always have to weigh that balance, right? We want all the kids to be able to participate in all the activities. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be a great experience. And you know, something that you've talked about offline with me in the past is too about um, the aging workforce and hydropower. That's not a problem um, just for, the, for here in North Central Washington, but really across the industry. And Chelan PUD has been really, trying to take a leap ahead, start recruitment early, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yep. Definitely an aging workforce. Yeah. Um, there will be, oh, I've heard numbers upwards of 40% uh, replacement over the next six or seven years. So if you're an eighth grader right now, six years from now, where are you? You know, yeah, you're, right. you're in that place where you can fill some of these positions. And that's why we begin to really outreach it at that grade level. So important. And another thing I love about the STEM Academy, just to, to to some more about that is not all STEM fields have to be a four-year baccalaureate pathway, right? There's a lot of STEM and uh, STEM fields and then great career paths that are for technical, learn on the job, um, apprenticeship style as well. Absolutely. Which I think is really important to showcase. Um, but that's not it. You also do summer science adventures. Kristen, tell me about kind of the other programming you offer for families during the summertime. Yeah, so in July, we're bringing first and second graders out for a week and third and fourth graders out for a week. And we're inviting them to participate in STEM activities. They're gonna build things, they're gonna get creative with us, they're gonna do some art, they're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, and they're gonna learn about different principles of hydropower along the way. And as Bob, I think you mentioned earlier, I think they're starved for doing 
more stuff in person, more That's hands-on right. activities. I'm sure parents are ready for those opportunities as well now that we're shifting. It feels so good. Kind of, yeah. Sh- uh, hopefully shifting out of this um, past couple of years. Now, for anyone who, um, you know, maybe is looking for a way to serve or, or give back or has some volunteer time, is that an opportunity at the Rocky Reach Discovery Center? We do welcome volunteers okay. and ambassadors, and we're we're just finishing our River of Power Week with those mm-hmm. fourth graders, and we had dozens of volunteers yes. out. Well, four thousand kids. <laughs> yeah, I would that's hope. Right. hope <laughs> Check out the extra hands. Hope yeah. that you can get some extra hands corralling. Yes. Yes. That was a community achievement to, <laughs> to pull that yes. off. And yes, yeah, yeah, it's we have some amazing opportunities. People that are interested in education or just love talking mm-hmm. with people or. Um, love helping spread the message of clean, renewable hydropower. We'd, mm. we'd love to invite them to contact us and learn about volunteer opportunities. Fantastic. Well, where, uh, that's a great segue into what's the best way to reach reach uh, the two of you and the Discovery Center and to learn more? So follow us on Facebook okay. at Visit Rocky Reach or visit us at chelanpud.org okay. on the Discovery Center webpage to learn about upcoming events and opportunities and all of our contact information is on there. Awesome. Well, thank you both for all the work you're doing to serve our community and our youth. Uh, It's been so fun to have you on air. And uh, for those of you tuning in, I encourage you to go visit the team at Rocky Reach Discovery Center. If you have not been out, uh, the the new center is really exciting for all ages. Again, right? right. It's that hands-on learning, whether you are 5 or 95. So get out and visit. And um, with that, we're going to head out to one last commercial break. Thanks again for coming on air today. Thank you for having me. I want to thank Bob and Kristen again for joining me today on Networked. So fun to learn about the incredible programs and opportunities they have for youth, um, community members, and visitors coming through North Central Washington. To find out more about their programs, be sure to visit their website. And if you're also looking for other ways uh, to get connected in terms of STEM and programming, also check out the Tech Alliance website. We're at Since 1999, NCW Tech Alliance oh, has served as our regional hub for technology we'll innovation. As a 501c3, their nonprofit mission is to connect people and technology resources to create a thriving community. You can network with the team and guests from today's show by visiting them at www.ncwtech.org.